In this video, I install Starlink on my roof and then set up the UDM Pro with double WAN failover. Yeah, just here. Yeah. Starlink just arrived. Um, I'm already on a satellite connection, which is what in Australia is called NBN Skymaster Plus. It sounds like our James Bond, but it isn't. It's not bad, but it's not great. Uh, the main problem I have is latency because it's a geosynchronous satellite, so latency is 600 milliseconds, which seems to kill a lot of services like Dropbox or video calls or many other things. I can't remember right now, but I constantly talk over people, especially in video calls because there's a delay like that. It's annoying. So I've ordered Starlink, which finally came after six and a half months. And the trick is that I don't trust Starlink yet because it's still very much beta. There's not a lot. There's 1700 satellites right now or something like that. That's a lot, but not a lot for what they need. So I'm going to, in this video, obviously install the Starlink thing. We've seen that probably before, but do a double WAN uh, setup with the UDM Pro that's behind me in the server cabinet. So I'm going to have two internet connections with this being the primary and my current uh, SkyMaster Plus connection being the failover. And I'll see how that goes because I need to put uh, one of the connections through a fiber, like an SFP Plus connection. So I need to a converter for that. I need to install that in a place where it can see the sky and uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But we'll go through that as, we, uh, as the video progresses because I'm not even sure what's gonna happen. Hmm. So first step is to install the Starlink. Uh, I'll show you how that works with the app and it's gonna be just above us on the roof to start with. Hopefully there's enough visibility of the sky there. Um, and then I'll plug it into the UDM Pro and then we'll go in and see how the setup uh, is from the network controller. Yeah, okay. Onwards. Hello. Um, I, don't, I don't particularly subscribe to the idea of unboxing videos, but I'm gonna do an unboxing video. I don't know. Let's just see what's in the box, right? Okay. Because uh, I got a knife. Don't tell my mother. And um, I'm gonna just shoot. We'll just. I know what's in the box. It's Starlink. It's not gonna be a big surprise. Go. So it's just a whole big box. Everything comes connected in it. So there's a piece of cardboard. Step one, two, three. Put up dish. Attach to things and open app. Yes. Um, and a lot of plastic. That's it, right? It all comes connected in it. So let me just show you, hang on. So, let's zoom a bit out here, here we go. So in here is the actual dish. There's the, the roof mount thing that you plug the dish into, or, or place it into. That is the actual modem that gets the data. And then there's a power supply, which is there, that gets connected in with these two. And then there's an awful lot of cable, about 30 meters of it. Um, that's it. All comes connected already. You could just plug it in where it is, put that onto there, and you'd be good. So, yeah, anyway. I'm just gonna throw it up on the roof. Ah, not throw it, but I'm gonna install it, I think. Um, because put that on, put dishy, as it's effectually called, on, and then just um, put the cable in, and then fire it up. See what happens, I guess. So I've placed Starlink on my roof and I've fired up the Starlink app. So as soon as I plug in the Starlink and you go next in the in the app, you can see here on the screen that uh, the, it actually fires up. It goes from stored mode to active mode, I think. And then you have to connect to the Starlink Wi-Fi, which shows up as some number. So I'll just wait for it here. Starlink 86629. So you connect to that and then you go back to the app and then that will actually connect to Dishi itself, like this. So now we need to create a new Wi-Fi network name. So this is for connecting to the white Wi-Fi router. We're going to call this uh, uh, Astronolars. Why not? And then set up a password. And then uh, you need to connect to it again, because obviously now the Wi-Fi SSID has changed. So there's Astronolars. So connect to that. And once you've connected to it, now we now have a, uh, a setup, a Wi-Fi, so we can connect to Dishy. And that means that we can then set up the rest of Starlink. So here we go. It's now offline. Then it takes a little while for it to fire up. It stays offline for a fair bit 
um, before it sort of starts connecting to things. It must be booting up and loading and whatever it is that it needs to do. And just about to go online. So once that happens, the dish itself actually starts finding uh, satellites. So you can see here that it starts moving around. And it will do that throughout its entire life. It just keeps following the satellites. That's the whole idea of Starlink. There we go. It moves. Is that it will follow satellites as they fly above and move between satellites as it needs to. So you don't have to worry about any of that. It does that all on its own. But the app itself gives us a few stats and whatnot about outages, about latency, about speeds, uh, about connectivity in general. Such as here, you can see there is the uptime outages. Obviously, we just connected it. The latency of what that might be. Usually, I get about 20 to 40 milliseconds. It's not bad. And the usage, you know, how fast is it going? You can do speed tests through the app as well, which we'll do in just a second. And you can see the connected devices. So this is specifically to that Wi-Fi access point, which uh, you, that comes with the Starlink kit. So here's a speed test that will automatically start a speed test as soon as you go into it. And then that will do a download, upload. We all know how speed test works. In this case, I got something like 85, 80 megabit per second, which is very usable. And then it does the upload as well. And that usually sits about 25, maybe 30 megabit, which is not terrible. But considering I upload a lot of video, I would like it faster. Maybe that comes. I just wanted to compare it with a different kind of speed test from Okla here, the one that you probably used before. And that got about 300 megabit uh, at a slightly different time, but pretty, pretty damn good. Uh, I usually get about 200 megabit, maybe something like that, but 300 is not unusual. So uh, this apparently is going to go even faster in the future. So that would be amazing. Uh, but I'm very happy with this. It's certainly a vast improvement over my uh, previous internet connection. And this uh, bodes well for the future of rural living. I mean, you can actually get out into the countryside and have fantastic internet so you can work from anywhere. Fantastic. All right, I'm back at the UDM Pro, which is right there. And the, the Dream Machine Pro does support two internet connections, two WAN connections by default. But one's RJ45, so that's your standard network cable, not that one. And one is SFP plus, short form something plus, which is the fiber cable, right? And I don't have a fiber input from the Starlink. It's all IJ45. So I have acquired one of these. So that is a transceiver module. So you put IJ45 into one end and the other end is the SFP plus. And this is a ubiquity UF IJ45 1G thing. And goes up to one gigabit. So I'm gonna use that with Starlink. And then this thing here is my previous satellite connection that you saw just before up in the roof. That's still connected. I'm going to use that as failover just because Starlink still sort of beta. Actually, they came out of beta, but just in case it goes out, I'm pretty reliant on uh, network connection for my work. So I'm going to have a failover and then we'll see how that works in, uh, in the UDM Pro network controller afterwards. So let me just plug that in. So I'll take out that little plastic thingy here. Eh. There we go, like that. Insert the transceiver one end, like that, goes a little click, goes really far in, about that far in. And then I'm gonna just unplug this, hope for the best, plug that in, and I'm gonna plug the other one, the old network connection into WAN 1. So the WAN 2, or the SFP, or the fiber, is the Starlink, and the Normal input, normal, well, anyway, RJ, uh, uh, RJ45 is my old satellite connection. All right, so now Starlink's installed. I just want to show you where I installed it and why, because that satellite dish there is actually the old one. That's the NBN in Australia, it's called NBN, National Broadband Network. That's the satellite uh, connection for that. That's not Starlink. Um, I did put it here when I set it up, but there were obstructions, right? So there's trees around. So let me just show you where it went and why. Alrighty, so, ooh, wobble wobble, here we go. So you can see the cable there, that's the Starlink cable. Obviously this is not the final install, it's just where it is for right now for testing. Comes from down there, there's the window, goes in through the window, and then it goes up here, over the roof, and it actually just sits over here, 
right there. Now, it's not secured yet, so I put some bricks and tiles and stuff to just make sure that it, it performs all right. But here, if you look around, that tree is far enough away, that tree is far enough away, that tree is just far enough away. There's actually a pitch roof here, but it seems to be all right with that. The only tree that's a problem is that one there. For some reason, just the top of that seems to be under obstruction, but only just. So we don't actually get any outages from it. So that's what the app has said. So far, it's been good results um, for the testing. So that's where Dishy is. And obviously it's gonna be permanent. We're gonna put the cables underneath the roof, etc., etc. But um, that's where it is. All right, so you just saw where the cable goes in through the window. That's just behind the camera here and it comes on the floor and it goes up and it's here, it's from Dishy. Not ideal, obviously not the final solution, but we're doing this just so we can test it out to make sure we know where things go. Now, this was the Wi-Fi router from Starlink that I connected to in the app. You saw I create a new network, etc., etc., to connect to Starlink and set it up. I don't actually want to use this because I don't need another Wi-Fi network, which is only going to be Starlink. I want to connect Starlink to my whole Unify network. And I do that by taking the white cable out of this uh, Wi-Fi router. Don't need that anymore. And that is just from the power box here. You can see it there. And that goes directly into the Unify UDM Pro right there. So that's how you connect it directly up to it. And uh, one of the things that does work is the Starlink app, but I figured that out as well, but I'm gonna do another video on that. Hey, so now let's have a look at all the double WAN failover setup on the UDM Pro. All right, I'm in my Unify network controller and I've gone into the settings and on the internet I have my WAN and my WAN 2. And you can see here the first one is my old SkyMaster connection, the IP star, and WAN 2 is Starlink. Now in order to do failover, you use WAN 2 in here if I go into advanced. And on the load balancing, it's failover. Now apparently eventually there will be load balancing as an option, but right now it's failover only. The problem is that I want my Starlink to be the primary and I want IP star to be my failover. So I'll have to change the two WAN ports around so that Starlink is WAN and IP star is WAN2. Now by default, when you plug in another connection into the UDM Pro into the SFP Plus port, that becomes WAN2 apparently. So I need to swap around. So I'm gonna go back to my devices, into my UDM Pro, under settings, and here I click on one of the ports. You can see right now the internet connection is from port 9, which is WAN. Port 10 is WAN 2. So I can click on one of them, it'll show me both my interfaces. And I'm going to swap them. And I do that by going WAN 2 disabled. And then WAN becomes WAN 2. And then I put that back as WAN. And then I apply that. So I've now swapped the two so that a Starlink becomes my primary. And we can see that up here if I hover over this. It now says port Hey, uh, why is this not working? Hmm, all right. That still says WAN 9, and WAN 1 is definitely IP stars, IP address. Hey, so if I go back to settings, we hover over here, and we can see, or we click rather, port 9 definitely is WAN 2, according to this, but obviously it isn't because this is differently. Huh, all right, let's try and restart the UDM Pro, I think. So I'll go into the settings for the actual UDM Pro and under here, under uh, advanced, I can then click restart console and then we just gotta restart it. Uh, hopefully that'll fix it, otherwise uh, plan B. So I've restarted it. Let's go in and have a look again if the WAN 1 and WAN 2 has been swapped. So go back into settings, because yeah, the loads dashboard, and then we go into settings and internet, and then we'll see if we've been successful. No. If you know what's happening, let me know in the comments. Um, because I like to know. I don't understand what's happening. Maybe the UDM Pro has something to say. Let's just have a look at the settings here or the configuration for the WAN 1 and WAN 2. So if I go under settings um, and just to check what they say, if I hover over these ports, nope, that's WAN 2 again. Right, well, that didn't work at all. I think we're just going to revert and put Starlink into port 9 
an IP star into port 10, which is WAN 2, because that's the failover. That's weird. Huh. Alright, well, I just swapped the plugs and, um, well, that worked. Not ideal. Not sure what happened there. Yeah, I'd really like to know. Let me know in the comments what I did wrong, if anything, or maybe there's a bug. Hmm. Anyway, I now can click on WAN2 and under Advanced, and you can see here that it is failover only. So now if I lose connection to Starlink, this should kick in. Um, well, I could test it by obviously disconnecting Starlink, and we'll see, and that should work. But I trust that this will work. It's one of the core features. So that's it. You don't actually have to do much other than having two internet connections, and then you get failover. So um, that's kind of cool. And I think it'll work, and it'll give me some peace of mind, at least until I know Starlink is super stable, and I can get rid of the backup connection. So with that, subscribe and comment and like and all that stuff, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.